Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create complex 3D models using photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the process of taking many still images of an object and using these images to reconstruct and recreate a digital 3D model of that particular object. I'll be using a software called Meshroom for this particular process. Meshroom is a free open source piece of photogrammetry software within which we can recreate digital models from a series of images. There are many other pieces of software similar to Meshroom and they all use very similar processes as well so hopefully this workflow should be applicable to other pieces of software if you're using those. Also at the end of this video I will look at how to take the mesh you create from Meshroom into a program like Rhino and tidy it up for use within our digital models and designs. This process can be used to capture many different types of objects but it is important that you're able to photograph the object from every single possible angle, this way capturing it from all of those sides and being able to then reconstruct the object from all of those positions. The way the software works is it looks at different photographs and notices similarities between those photos and uses those similarities to then build your 3D model from that point. Therefore, if you can't take a photo of a particular angle, the reconstruction in that angle will be of a lower quality than of angles you are able to see. As you can see from some of the examples on screen, I've used this process a lot for scanning trees and other natural objects. The reason for this is these objects are very hard to model in a digital space due to the random nature of their growth, so photogrammetry is a really good process for capturing these more natural objects. We'll begin by going through the method of capturing a series of photographs of these objects we want to scan. The best thing is to find your object you want to scan, work out how you can get around this object so you can explore it from all different angles, and then I begin to record a video of just walking slowly around the object, focusing on the key areas I want to capture in my scans. It's important when you record these videos to move very slowly so you don't have any blur in between each individual frame because what we'll be doing next is we'll be taking this video and extracting out a series of frames which we'll then use as a way to reconstruct our model. The idea is you just want a good recording of the entire object from as many angles as possible. The way this process works is the more images, the more accurate your model will be, but also the longer the process would take. So I aim for a sort of four or five minute video recording from all angles to try and kind of capture every possible angle of that object. Now, once you've done your video recording and you're back home and you want to process this, we now need to turn this video into a series of still images. The best process I use for this is using Photoshop. So if we open up Photoshop here, I'm going to go to File, Import and Video Frames to Layers. What this allows me to do is I can find my video I've recorded here. We can hit Open and it will bring up this little dialog box here which will allow us to import our video as a series of frames. Now the good point about this tool is we have this limit to every option and this allows it to bring in instead of every single frame of video I can limit it to every 10 frames so it will only bring in every 10th frame of that video. Why that's quite good for this process is often in a video you'll have sort of lots of frames that are very very similar and the more images you have in a photogrammetry process the longer the process takes so I usually try and aim for about 500 photos for a good object and so by limiting it here, I can kind of get it to around 500 photos and it won't be too many, so it won't take a really long time. I won't have to double up on lots of frames that look really similar. So if I hit limit to every 10, hit OK, and it will ask me to kind of import these in. And as it says, it might take a while depending on how many frames you have. So we'll just let that import in now. Once that's loaded in, you'll now see you've got all your frames on the right hand side here and we can kind of flick through seeing all the different angles I have of my object distilled as single frames. So once you've got these, we now need to save them back out as a series of JPEGs. So to do that, we can go File, Export and Layers to File here. And what this would do is it will save every layer as its own file. So we give it a destination where we want to save these. For now, I'll just put this on the desktop in a new folder.
save it there and we'll give it a name and you want to make sure that the visible layers only isn't ticked on because by default all the layers will be turned off so if you do that it will only export the layers that are visible but we want to export all the layers in this whole file so make sure that option is ticked off keep it as jpeg and keep your quality high and once that's done we'll hit run and this process usually takes quite a while to do it might be like four or five minutes so we'll pause and let the video run this process once that process is finished you'll end up with your series of layers like the photographs here and as you can see we've got the object from lots of different angles from our video and if we sort of flick through them quickly we can kind of get a snapshot of those um, I usually do a quick check through of these to make sure there are no really blurry images because they'll sort of slightly upset the quality of the final outcome. So it's good to have a quick flick through looking at it from all sides to see if there's any particularly blurry photos and if there are just delete those from the set. So now we've got our photo set we can now move into Meshroom to begin our reconstruction. Now once you've downloaded Meshroom we don't actually need to install it as such. We can just run the program straight from the folder you've downloaded so you should end up with a folder that looks something like this if we open that up you can see a little meshroom application there and we're just going to double click on that application there and that should load up the software you'll see the code running here and then the software will load itself something like this so this is the generic Meshroom interface you'll see and it's a really simple interface to get to use. Essentially what we want to do is we need to first drop our images into this part here. So I'm just going to go to my layers, just minimize that down. We'll just select all of the layers there and we're just going to drag and drop them into the images part here. And there you can see that's loaded all of them in now. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to just save the file before we run our reconstruction so we'll just find where we want to save it and we'll just save it here as stump like so and then once that's saved all we need to do now is hit start and what this would do is you'll see this little kind of network flow down here it will essentially run through each of these processes creating our mesh cloud from our series of photos, looking at the matching parts of the photos, merging them up and eventually creating a textured mesh at the end of it. Now with about 500 photos this process usually takes sort of seven or eight hours and it runs on your graphics card so it's hard to run other programs while doing it. So my recommendation is to leave it overnight when doing this process because it takes quite a long time. But you don't really need to play around with these settings. Most of the reconstructions I've done have just used the default settings. So for now, I just keep it as the default and press your run button. So to get the mesh, we're going to hit start and I'll pause the video and come back once this process has done. And you'll see as it starts, as each one of these is complete, it will go green in that process as well. So it's what you're waiting for is all of these sections to go green until the object is finished reconstructing. Now you can see the process is finished and we have all these sections that are green here now, which means the process is complete. And you can see there's a little preview on the right hand side of our completed point cloud of our model. You'll also see there's kind of small little cameras placed around these little white markers and that is the software there identifying the kind of different angles that we're taking photos of our model from. So it kind of recognises exactly where you're moving around the model and help to kind of recreate that mesh and that sort of dense mesh from that model. And what we're seeing here is a preview of the point cloud. So this particular piece of software isn't the best for viewing your model so I'd recommend then importing it in to a software like Rhino to get an actual sense of what the model looks like. So what we're going to do is once that's done if we then move over to what's created our Meshroom cache and you'll find this once it's sort of finished making your model it will automatically save this Meshroom cache which is your series of files within which it's saving this point cloud in your mesh as the program runs. Now each of these files 
links to each of these headings here. So it kind of every stage of this is saved within each of the files. And the last stage, which is the one we want, which is our textured mesh, is saved in texturing, which is this folder here. So if we open this up, you'll see we've got our texture here, which is essentially our series of images that have used to create the 3D model. And we also have our mesh file, which is this textured mesh file here, which is our 3D object, which we can use to import into Rhino. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Rhino and we're gonna import our textured mesh in. So now I'm in Rhino, we're gonna to go to File, Import, we're gonna locate our mesh, which we have saved out, which is this one here, and we're just gonna hit Open there. Now we'll have some OBJ import options. I don't usually change any of these, we'll just keep them as default and hit OK. And depending on how dense your mesh is, this might take quite a long time to import in as we're importing quite a sort of heavy mesh file from our photogrammetry software into our Rhino file. Now that's loaded in, you can see it here, it's our yellow object there. You'll notice that it might be quite small from that particular piece of software because the units might not be the same. So something I usually do just before I scale it to the exact scale is just use the scale tool enter in a center base point and then just scale it by 100 there just to make it a bit bigger to work with because sometimes it is very small coming from that piece of software and here you can see that that mesh has now come in now what's usually good is to set it to rendered because it will automatically import the texture as well so we can get a sense of that mesh and there you can see that my model is now imported in and we've got some good detail on this model because I was able to really get around the sort of bottom of the roots here you can see that that's coming quite well this part not so much I think there was a sort of small branch in the way so you'll see the sort of limitations of it some parts are kind of brought in better than others and we've got some extra bits of mesh around the model as well we'll finish by just tidying up some of these additional faces around the model and to do this I'm going to select my whole model here open up the mesh tools option on the side we'll just open this panel out a bit larger and we'll click on the delete faces tool here what this allows us to do is we can then just go around and select the faces we'd like to delete and i'm just picking up on the kind of main faces that are extra in the model that i don't need as part of my main mesh so when i start to work with this mesh we don't have these additional sort of weird glitchy areas on the edge of the mesh model. Once you've selected all those faces you can then hit enter and that will then delete them from the model like so. So now we have a slightly tidier mesh and we can always go into detail and tidy up any last bits. And that is essentially the process of taking photographs of a model, turning it into a 3D reconstruction and then importing that reconstruction into Rhino. In the next video, we'll be going through some potential applications with such models and how you might begin to use them within your design work or within your visualizations. I hope you found this video helpful and if there are any additional videos you need to look at on 3D modeling, texturing and rendering in Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel.